My next guest worked in the White House for all eight years of the Obama administration, first as a senior speechwriter for the president, then as head speechwriter for First Lady Michelle Obama. But even with those high-profile jobs, toward the end of her White House time, Wayland native Sarah Hurwitz was on a journey of her own, ultimately reading hundreds of books about Judaism, taking classes, going on retreats, and rediscovering the religion she drifted away from as a child in a whole new way. Her new book is Here All Along, Finding Meaning, Spirituality, and a Deeper Connection to Life in Judaism After Finally Choosing to Look There. Sarah Hurwitz, who's also written for Hillary Clinton and John Kerry, among others, joins me now. Hey, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So I want to accelerate to what you started doing about five years ago when you re-engaged with or rediscovered your Judaism. So the Cliff Notes version, if I have it right, is as a sixth grader, you just really weren't feeling Hebrew school. <laughs> That's right. You got your parents to, to transfer you to an allegedly more demanding one that was actually <laughs> less demanding. Exactly. And then you just kind of fell away. From exactly. There. And then, to skip ahead uh, a few years, uh, in your mid-30s, you break up with a guy, and you've got some time on your hands, and you decide to reimmerse yourself in the faith of your forefathers. Is that, is that it, That's basically? pretty much it, yeah. So i got to ask, and I think in the book you, you pretty much answer this question, but was there no additional catalyst, like a sense of a, def a lack of greater meaning in your life or the illness of a loved one or a friend, nothing like that? No, and I know that sounds bizarre. Yeah. I literally, I was lonely and anxious after a breakup. I heard about this intro class and I thought, look, I should learn something about my heritage. You know, I should just learn something about Judaism. And I think in retrospect now, I realized that something was missing from my life, right? And yeah. knowing what I've gained from Judaism now, I realized that I was missing something, but at the time it was not a crisis actually. This happened, or this began, when you were still working in the White House, right? right. How do you find the time when you are the senior <laughs> speechwriter for the First Lady to read hundreds of books and go on retreats and speak with eminent uh, scholars of Judaism? It was challenging. I mean, if I'd been writing for the president, I think it would have been impossible because his schedule is so unpredictable. He is the first responder, right? He has to respond to every crisis, everything, whereas her schedule is a little bit more manageable. You know, she is... She kind of has a little more control, so I had a little bit more control, but it was hard. It was some late nights. You know, I, I had to vacation when she vacationed, so it's, it's not easy. Did you have family or friends look askance at what you were doing? Because I feel like that's a natural default if you know someone who all of a sudden gets religion or gets really interested in it. Did, did people right. think it was kind of weird? You know, I think people sometimes assume when someone gets engaged in their faith that they are kind of going to become an extremist. Right. And I think what they saw me doing was actually the opposite of that. You know, my engagement with Judaism was it's thoughtful, it's questioning as Judaism demands, and it's not particularly extreme. Right. I, I have a very you know, kind of a mainstream approach to and practice of Judaism. So I, while they were a little hesitant at first, then they realized, oh, she's just going to read a lot of books and celebrate Shabbat and go on retreats. OK. It's cool. Okay. It's cool. There's a moment in the book that, <laughs> that made me literally laugh out loud where you're at a party, I think, during toward the, the end of the Obama administration, and you hear a couple people talking about the afterlife, and you get all excited, and you want to talk about God or the nature of God as well, and they tell you that you've actually got it wrong, right? Yes. They're talking about what they're going to do after the Obama administration. Yes, they were very confused, and I was very embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it has to be tough, I would think, watching... President Trump seek mm -hmm. to, to my eyes, systematically dismantle everything that the president whose administration you served in accomplished. Yeah, Are there two or three insights that you've gotten from your re-engagement mm -hmm. with Judaism that have helped you during the last couple of years? Yeah, I would say that the core animating idea of Judaism is it's a line in the Torah, our key holy text, that we're all created in the divine image, which is understood to mean, as a rabbi named Yitz Greenberg puts it, that we're all infinitely worthy totally equal and fundamentally unique, which you can say like, of course, we all believe that, but no, we don't, right? We treat people differently based on their status, their wealth, their, their beauty. And I think what I see in this administration is a real degradation of the fundamental dignity of a lot of vulnerable people. You know, it's a real mistreatment of people and a treatment that they're, of them as if they are not infinitely worthy or equal or unique. And that is very dismaying. It's very dismaying. How about, um when it comes to, to seeking solace, as you watch President Obama's, uh, Obama's legacy being, being undercut, are there aspects of your Judaism that, that have made that easier to handle? And um, I'm, I'm wondering if some sort of sense of the non-progressive nature of history or the cyclical nature of history, I, I'm just, I'm thinking out loud here, but are there aspects of 
that that have been a source of comfort? You know, if anything, it's almost been the opposite. I think the, you know, the lesson of Jewish history is that it's really dangerous when people come in who deliberately try to abuse minorities. So if anything, I think I feel a little bit more of a sense of alarm having studied Jewish history. Um, it actually doesn't really provide me a lot of comfort. But I will say adult, uh, developing an adult spirituality in Judaism, I think it does give me a sense of connection to something greater, um, some moments of just kind of peace and, and connection and openness that I think are helpful in dealing with this, but I, I would say overall it, it makes me concerned. One of the things I was struck by, and I, I don't know how common this is, but I had the sense that in your book you are, and you're pretty explicit about it, you're not only pitching to people who have become, uh, I don't know if you can become a lapsed Jew like you can become a lapsed Catholic, but you know, cultural <laughs> Jews, right. not strongly identifying with the faith, but you're also, if I read you right, pitching to people who are not Jewish, do not come from a Jewish background, and exactly. might actually be interested in becoming Jewish, right? Exactly. That is exactly my goal, because I think each of the world's religions offers moral wisdom, right? Judaism has such profound ethical wisdom about how we use our speech, how we care for those who are vulnerable. It has this profound spiritual wisdom. It doesn't just say, God is a man in the sky who controls everything, and if you don't believe that, you're an atheist. There's actually many different conceptions of God in Judaism, and a lot of my friends who are not Jewish who've read the book, they say, like, this, this is amazing. Like, I actually now think differently about how I speak, or my whole chapter, I have an entire chapter on death and mourning. And I have a friend who sadly just lost her father, and she said to me, you know, I really wish I'd had something like the Jewish mourning rituals to help walk me through this really difficult time. When, when my father died a long time ago, 11 mm -hmm. years ago, um, I have some close friends who are Jewish, and I had some familiarity with what they got yeah. at that point. And I, I found myself wishing something very similar, oh. that I was part of that tradition. Yeah. Is that controversial at all? Because I know uh, Jews don't usually, uh, you don't proselytize, I should we make it clear. You are, you are no. teaching uh, or right. informing. Share. But Jews don't proselytize. And right. as you point out in the book, one of the arguments for the maintenance of Jewish identity, you know, marrying other Jews, that sort of thing, has been we need to maintain the sort of cohesion of the community. So is it at all? Uh, controversial to make the pitch for, hey, if you're out there and you're seeking greater meaning and you're not Jewish, maybe you should check it out? You know, it's funny. I don't really think of myself as, that does feel a little bit like process. I'm, I I, by like the way, I'm more... overstating it. Yeah. I'm making it sound you know, like it doesn't an feel aggressive push. But... Yeah, it doesn't feel controversial because, you know, we definitely don't proselytize, but don't proselytize doesn't mean don't share, right? And, Ju and Judaism is very welcoming to those who are interested in converting. We have many, you know, 72% of non-Orthodox Jews are married to people who aren't Jewish, and we want those people to be part of our family, too. We want them to feel welcome and loved. And so I think that's, you know, part of my, my goal is to reach those folks as well. I think we have about 45 seconds left to tackle this very large question. <laughs> you, among other things in the book, say that y you think there are issues with selectively appropriating parts of different faith traditions that, that work for you. And you say that you've done similar things, you've incorporated Buddhist teachings in your own life, but that ultimately there's something you don't get out of that approach to spirituality. Can you just briefly yeah. explain what it is you don't get? It's sort of like the way we consume media, where we only consume the media that affirms our own biases and prejudices. And I think there's a danger in consuming different faith traditions that only affirm your existing you know, approach to life. And I think there's something helpful about engaging deeply with any faith tradition and letting its wisdom challenge you and then you challenging back. These are ancient religions and they need to be interpreted with heart and with mind and with compassion and love. And if they're not, it's quite dangerous. I got to say, that is an argument that I had never heard anyone else make. And it makes a lot of sense just intuitively. So uh, Sarah Horowitz, thank you for being here. Thank and you for having me. On the, book. the book, again, is here all along finding meaning, spirituality, and a deeper connection to life in Judaism after finally choosing to look there.